So, importing Wikipedia in Plone. There is a demo inside. So, uh, what's the thing? Uh, ZooDB is good to store objects. Okay? Uh, Plone contents are objects. We store them in the ZooDB, so it does work. Okay, no problem. We all do that every time. That's Plone. But what if you want to store a um, lot of records, non-contentish records, let's say that, like, um, I don't know, um, addresses, contacts, uh, polls, results, uh, statistics, um, mail list subscribers, this kind of stuff. Um, any, by the way, any business-specific structured data, tiny data, structured, not content. Wow. You can store them as content anyway. You can create a content type and so store them that way. It, it will work pretty fine uh, as far as you do not have um, too many data to, to, uh, to store. Like, let's say, yeah, 100,000 is okay, but it's pretty much the maximum. So, uh, another approach. You can store them in, um, in an SQL database. Okay, It just works. Uh, I mean, that's, uh, that's a good solution. We can do that pretty easily with Zoop. Okay, but two major problems. First one, uh, you need to manage a secondary system. It means you, you need to deploy it. You need to uh, back up this system. You need to make sure it's secured. Security is just fine in Zoop, but when you try, when you start putting data outside Zoop, then you have to implement the security somehow. So it's all a mess, okay? That's problem number one. Problem number two, I hate SQL. So basically I can't. Um, that's the way it is. Um, maybe I can just cannot digest it. No way. So how could, I, how could I do that? How could I store many, many, many records in my ZooDB? Because I just love my ZooDB. I won't stick to it. Is the ZDB strong enough to manage such an amount of data? Is the Z catalog strong enough to index the data? Because I probably need to index them to be able to search, filter, and so on. Well, my grandmother, my grandmother always told me that if, you're not, if you want to become stronger, you need to eat your soup. And that was a really good advice. She could have been a, a good Zob developer, by the way. So, where do we find a good soup for Plone? In a super super. So meet super. Super Plone and super are two, two packages uh, which provide um, storage and indexing into the UZDB for tiny records, but a big amount of tiny records. Uh, basically, what is it? It's just a way to um, record any pickable data in a persistent structure. Uh, it's based on B3, ZooDB B3, and uh, it uses um, Node X ZooDB, uh, which is really nice stuff, and it just uses Repos Catalog to index. So that's something you know. It has been created by Blue, Dyn Blue Dynamics. Those people rocks. They are really good. So, and it's just fantastic. So let me introduce Super. Um, it's quite straightforward to use. You can create a soup. So a soup is a container for records. You can create as many soup as you want in your, uh, in your plone. You create a soup, then you create a record, and you set attributes. Okay, no big deal. You can store anything that is, which is pickable, okay, in two records. You, then you store, in, you store it that way, soup, add record, and you're done, okay? So not really complex. Uh, you can have a record into a record, no problem. So here, my record and address uh, going to be into uh, going to have secondary attributes. It makes no problems, and you can access your record very easily as well. So you get your soup and you get your record by its ID. So nothing difficult here. Then you can query uh, your uh, your data using a repos catalog. 
you have, okay, we cannot see everything, but anyway, um, you, you can write a query uh, using uh, those, um, those keywords, or you can also use a CQ format, which is much easier to, to read. So like user equal user one, and foo in text, and you're done. Um, it just return a record. Uh, it can be run in lazy mode, of course, and it's very, very efficient. So, of course, to do that, you need to define some index, different type of index. It's quite similar to, to the zip catalog, of course. That's, um, uh, you have a text index, you have a field index, and so on. Um, more about super. Super, um, a soup container can be moved into a specific ZooDB moon point. Okay. There is a tool for that. Really handy. And it can be shared across multiple uh, independent plan instances. The same, the same database, let's call it that way, the same, same soup, soup container can be put into a, an FS file and shared if you need it. And it works on Plon and Pyramid, which is a good point. So now, um, well, as you know, I'm, I'm creating, I'm um, uh, managing Plomino, so I try to put super in Plomino, basically. So we can use Plomino to build non-content-oriented -content applications very easily. Dylan J just talked about it. Uh, you just design a form and you have a structure, and using this structure, you can start creating data. And using super, well, the idea is to be able to manage a huge amount of data. So, originally, in Plomino, the records, documents, we, we name them documents, were just 80 folders, okay? So, well, about 30,000 records were kind of maximum. To improve that, we moved it to pure CFS, okay? So, just a B3 folder, a CMF B3 folder, CMF object in there, and we are about one, so, yeah, 100,000 is kind of okay, but uh, if you want to go uh, higher, it can, can be difficult. You have to optimize stuff. You have to make sure you have not too many index in your uh, ZIT catalog because Plomino use uh, a, a local catalog for every database, and it can get quite big, and it, it slows down everything, okay? Now, with Super, we can reach millions. So you have millions of records in your, in your ZooDB, and it just works out really nicely. Yeah? Is it okay if we ask questions as you go? Okay. When you talk about hitting capacity, yeah. what are the things you hit? And are they different for each one of those three cases? Uh, sorry, I, don't, I, don't, I missed your point. Can you go back to sure. the AT? Yeah. So on this one and then yeah. the next one and the next one, you yeah. say capacity. Capacity is the maximum amount of data you can. What were the kinds of things that stopped you from going above that? Conflict errors or memory? No, it was, no, it was uh, memory was okay. No, it was just sl too slow, okay. basically. Query speed. Yeah, querying. Yeah. When you are trying to filter data or to, to extract data for some reason, it was just too slow. Not usable, but it was working, okay? You, you, it just... Too slow. No, conflicts are okay. Uh, memory is fine. So there's, an, there's no problem like that. It's just not usable, basically. That's it. So um, typical use case. Um, I need I needed to have um, 500,000 addresses for a sub part of France, and to be able to query them uh, in full text just like when you type an address on, on Google Map, and to display the result on the map. Okay, so let's see the demo. So, so here is my map. Here I have, um, well, it's ugly, okay, it's not the, the real production thing. Um, I enter any address. It's at the city of Nantes, if you know. And I get the result. So that's my address. And it's full text indexed. I can have any address in the street. 
and it's really fast, okay? Half a million of arrests. Try to do that with archetypes or dexterity and you're gonna crash or you plan site, okay? It's really responsive, it's, it works really nicely. So that was my initial case, let's say. And it works. But at this point I decided to see, well, if I can do that, can I go higher? And what's the limit? What's the limit, basically? So, um, well, I decided, I'll try to figure out something which is known as being big. I picked Wikipedia. Everybody knows that Wikipedia is big, but maybe you don't know how many records there are in, in Wikipedia, how many articles there are in Wikipedia. Um, I took the, the dump from um, last year, 2012, and it was about uh, five million and a half, okay? Um, so I said, why not? Uh, let's try. I, I don't speak specifically need to import Wikipedia in Plone, but Let's try and let's see. Um, first, I'm going to show you how it behaves with uh, only half a million of record. So uh, here we have um, a data tables component, you know, where we can display rapidly a uh, um, long list of, of contents. Um, we have uh, 400,000 um, uh, 400, uh, entries here. And I can, uh, it's full text indexed. And here is how it behaves. Let's search for John, for instance. Okay, it's instantaneous, okay? Really fast. Pagination is working really nice as well. So the, there is batch mode uh, in, um, in Super, which allow me to do that. It's just perfect. Now, that was easy. With five millions, it's not the same story. So, first, it's gonna take more time to load the, the first page. Okay, here we are. Oh yeah, uh, something I want to mention about Wikipedia. Wikipedia um, can be downloaded easily as XML. It's quite a um, shitty XML format. Really difficult to parse because you have few XML attribute, and then you have a big piece of wiki text with a lot of markers. It's not, it's not tagged based at all. It's really difficult to parse. And as I have to extract a lot of information from Wikipedia to build this, uh, my objective was to show the connection between the articles. So see what is linked to what. You have to go into this wiki format and parse everything, and it's really long. And the, um, so XML file is, is, about, um, is about 60 gigabytes. And parse a 60 gigabyte with Python is not cool, okay? It's, it's really painful. Um, you have RAM issue, you have a really lot of issues, and that's something, okay, painful and long. And at the end, what you get is that in the 10 first result, you have fuck you twice. Uh, I mean, it's not cool. It's not cool. Well, that's the way it is. By the way, there are two songs, two hard rock songs. They are in the first 10 results when you sort them alphabetically. Okay. Well, so now I have my five million and was five million six, six thousand. Um, let's see how it behaves now. Let's try to find Plone, for instance. See, few seconds. But working. Let's wait. Okay, seven entries. It's not that quick, okay? We, but that's a lot of data. So now let's um, check the, the, the plan bound. So, yeah, what I decided to do is to show all the articles connected to one article. And to make it a little, a little bit fun, I, I built this, um, this re rendering. Oh, we don't see the edge, but there are some edge between the different points. So each point is supposed to be an article. This is the central article, the plant band. And it's, okay, quite nice. It's dynamic. So that's D3, D3GS. Maybe you know this library, JavaScript library, which is just fantastic. So now I can click. So here the thing is, I'm requesting for each article connecting to plant, to plant band, all the article 
linked to those articles. So that's here. Contra at, the, at the first step, I was just querying once to get uh, all the prone articles, for, for instance, or, or just paginates kind of stuff. So that's one query, big query, because requesting on the entire database. Here, I'm doing a lot, a lot of different small queries. And it works quite nicely. And when I click on any of them, so uh, let's see this. Uh, sorry. It's going to load all the article connected to this article, OK? And it opens all the nodes everywhere. So that's quite fun. <laughs> And you get a very big SVG graphics that way, which is a lot of stuff. OK? Well, it's not, I'm not sure that's really useful, OK? Um, <laughs> but um, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. So uh, that's it. That's here. Behind that, behind each click here, there are a lot of query on my, on my uh, super database. And it just works, OK? Five, five millions of, of record. And it's okay. As you can see, pagination. So, yes, sorry. I was just wondering how big is your ZODB cache? Sorry? How big is the ZODB cache on the object server? The ZODB uh, file? Is how long does it the cache? The, the cache? How many objects are in the ZODB cache? Um, sorry, uh, there is only one object, the super um, object. The ZODB cache, the one you configure when you, you, you set up your instance? Okay, I made no change. Okay. This is the default. Setting, default setting for everything. So no optimization, no, no clustering, nothing. Just a basic instance, regular uh, settings for everything. Um, so uh, let's move back to the presentation. Um, my conclusion: Well, the so usage performances are acceptable. They are very good for, uh, let's say, a million of entries. No problem. They are specifically good with tiny records. With Wikipedia, records were kind of big. Compared to addresses, for instance, it was probably too big. That's why the, the performance is not that good. But it's kind of usable anyway. Okay? And the plone performance are totally not impacted. Okay? So you can put this kind of big database into a plone site and will not make any change for the rest of your plone features. So use it. Use, use Super, it's just fantastic. It's really easy to use, really easy to install. You, you should use it for your development, for your products, and so And a few thoughts. Um, maybe we could build a REST API on top of Super. Could be useful. So we could imagine to access it via our JavaScript stuff on front end to store anything uh, into the, the back end transparently without bothering uh, plon um, any, any interdependent package. We just call the soup and put stuff or read stuff, get stuff, etc. via a REST API. It could be cool. Uh, one of my problems during uh, this, uh, this work on this demo was the import of the, of the Wikipedia content. Massive import were quite painful. I had to split in, in small, uh, small file, well, small, uh, about uh, half a million uh, of record every time because he was eating all my RAM and so uh, even with um, intermediary transaction, safe point, this kind of stuff, it was really difficult. So that's something we need to improve because I have already used, for instance, regarding the address stuff, that's a typical thing I would have done with Elasticsearch, for instance. And with Elasticsearch, you can import many data like that. It's really quick. So that's something that could be improved at that point. I don't know if it's possible or not. I have uh, look, I see the code is quite nice. I don't see how we could improve it, but there's probably a way. Uh, that's something we maybe could discuss with the uh, Blue Dynamics people. Well, um, that's it. Yes, yes. So thank you. <laughs> Question, yes? Um, I'll give you the mic. Uh, yeah, maybe you could just defer indexing when you're impl importing. Just import everything, and then index at the end, and not index every every after every insert, right? I'm guessing it's indexing indexing after every insert. That's something I tried, and that's something I did. By the way, uh, it does help, but it's not it's not the whole thing. Um, how is this already integrated in Plomino or not? Or do you have to? What do you have to install or do extra? 
So it's not it's not already uh, releasable. Um, the the regular Plumino version is still working with CMF, and um, this version should be I don't know I haven't, I haven't planned a really uh, for now a release because I have broken a lot of stuff in Plumino to make it work, um, and my objective is to uh, try to isolate the storage layer in Plumino so we can plug it to Super or to uh, regular CMF object or to SQL or what? Well, not SQL because I hate it. But if someone wants to do it, uh, it will be easy. But uh, so that's a work I want to do before just releasing uh, Super. Here, my problem compared to the current Promino feature is I am not able to store files, okay, attach files into documents. So I plan to have a separate B3 folder to store files related to each document. And this is something I need to do to, before we can imagine any release. But that's not big work, I think. It's, OK, so that's something will occur probably next year. Um, I mean, for sure. Anybody else? No? Well, thank you. <laughs>